All right, let's take a stab at this recording how to do your homework. This homework is the t-test and ANOVA homework. The first thing that you're asked to do here, ah, there we go. The first thing that you'll be asked to do here is uh, an independent samples t-test. So I'm gonna use a different data set. I'm not gonna use a big five data set so I don't spoil it for anybody. I'll use a different data set and if you wanna use it, you can follow along. I think you have a copy of this that's more or less identical. I'm gonna use the punishment attitudes de data set and uh, make that thing work. So uh, let's just look at what's happening with um, this independent samples t-test. We've got a state of research question, describe the variables, etc. For an ind independent samples t-test, you need to compare two groups. And remember how the data organization of standard data matrix works. You want each row to be one participant and each column to be one, um, one variable. So, all right, so we've got JASP. Now in Google Sheets, I'm gonna open that data set you can do this in Excel, you can do it as this in whatever uh, spreadsheet program Max use, it's also very effective. So uh, in here I'm going to create a new, in my Google Drive, Google Sheets, and is this beautiful thing. All right, we're seeing it there. I'm going to, uh, let's see, I could do import, I'm just going to do, yeah, fine. I'll import something um, shared with me recent. I'm going to upload. I'm going to drag and drop. I'll, I'll select a file from my device. I'll just look here. Here's my data sets. This is where it is. I'm going to upload that thing. Convert text to numbers, days to formulas. Okay. I, this doesn't usually do that, but that's cool. Separate it. Let's, let's see how smart it is. It's probably pretty smart. Google is quite smart. They usually, they usually make pretty good products. They won't give you any support on them, and they're destroying de democracy, but they make good products. Kind of like Microsoft, but slightly more evil, if you can believe that. But I do love their products. All right, so here's subject group right here. Like We can just uh, scroll down. No, 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 no. We can scroll down. We can see the UGS change to APA to ATSA. Okay. Um, luckily, this is there. I mean, if, if this wasn't taking, if this one wasn't all organized, what I want to do is I want to, I want to do an analysis of um, my dependent variable here. I want to look at uh, whether the age of the participant, p dot age. I want to see is that significantly different see these are all numbers there's some NAs leave them alone when you import it to JASP JASP will turn the word to so blanks missing data so I want to see if the age here is significantly different between the APA and the ATSA members both of whom are going to be older than undergrads it's not really interesting to compare them to undergrads because of course they're both older they're professionals they've been working for many years undergrads are all 18 19 20 right so that's not interesting so I want to I want to create a new a new thing here. I'm going to insert one right. I'm going to be like, what am I going to call it? I'm going to call APA. Now you can't use like slashes and question marks and stuff. You can use periods and underscores generally. Google Sheets will let you do whatever you want, but when you convert that into JASP, JASP is going to do a very standard thing for these kinds of programs, which is it allows periods and underscores. So I'm going to do an underscore because everything else is periods. Maybe the underscore will remind me that I just made this. APA. I don't want to put this there at the keyboard versus ATSA. No, I'm going to actually, I should have just done this. Okay, I'm going to copy this whole thing. Let's see. Copy, and it's going to be like, you shouldn't do that. Okay, I'm going to paste this. Paste, sure, values only, whatever. I'm going to change this name APA versus ATSA. So I made a copy of that variable. Now I'm going to tweak that. I want to get rid of all the undergrads. Now, if this wasn't sorted, I need to go sort, sorted, not sorted. Um, I need to go sort. So I, you sort the entire data set always. So you keep all, you keep the rows together. So I'm going to sort 
by column A? No, I have to go down here where it says sort range. So the data does have a header row. We don't want those headers, the variable names, to get mixed up and put in alphabetical order. <coughs> I don't want to sort by subject number. I want to sort by sub.group. There we go. I'll sort it. All right, now it's sorted. And if there's anything out of order, then it's in order now. APA at, uh, where does the, oh, and the UGSs start here. So here's my new variable. And I'm just going to click there. Now you can just shift hold or hold shift and do arrows or page down while you're holding shift. That's a little trick to work with spreadsheets because there are 355 of these. I'm just going to hit the delete key. Delete. You want blanks, not spaces, absolutely not spaces, not return characters, blanks. So there we go. I deleted all the undergrads. Now I'm going to save this thing, which I have to save it as CSV. So uh download there we go comma separated values that should do it I'm gonna save this little guy put it back where it came from right next to its buddy um i have it in my little data sets folder here little punishment folder i'm going to change the name so i remember what it is same as before um for homework. Okay, let's just call it that. All right, I'll call it the for homework. Now let's, I can just ignore that window now and go back to what I was doing before. I can go back to JASP. Now back in JASP here, now I have, oh, the, this is going to cause problems. I'm going to have to create a new and then Jasper just won't open something. It'll be like, hey. Okay. This is the folder it's in for homework. It's going to create a new JASP window. And yeah, you can't see that. So let me fix that. That's not it, hang on. All right, we're back. Um, I got this thing opened in Jasp. This is the new data set. And see, it has APA versus ATSA as there. And I can scroll down and I can see where the UGSs disappear. There we go. Yeah, because that's what I need. I need a, a grouping variable with just two values in it. If I look at this, there's only two values in here. If I look over here at subject group, the original one, there were three. So I got rid of one of them. Okay, that's good. So let's, yeah, what am I supposed to do here? Let's switch back to let document window. My face is just too big. Let's, let's make my face much significantly smaller here. Uh, let's go back to let document window and describe my variables. Okay. So give a brief description, etc. blah, 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 blah. Now, my research question is going to be something like, is there a difference in average age between ATSA and APA participants? Yeah, once again. I describe my variables. I'm going to look in the code book. Um, so uh, the, this one that I here have here is APA versus ATSA. Uh, and I'm going to notice that modified from sub.grp, uh, blah, 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 whatever the code book says about that. And then I'll be like, UGS values removed, so I can just compare ATSA and APA participants. Make an explicit statement. Um, age was 
operationally defined as the variable age in the data set. Um, and what should we call this one? The variable AT, AT, ATSA versus APA. We can say professional group membership. That sounds like a good name. It's supposed to be a noun phrase. Was defined as APA versus ATSA. Technically, I should do that. It always bothers me. Basic statistics for each numerical variable within each group. What? what that's weird. How do I do that within each group? Well, I know how to do it. Let's find out. Let's switch back to Jasper. Okay. Um, descriptives. Descriptive statistics. Not subject group. And it's p.age. Oh, wow. I messed that up. I need to go change that in my document. It's p.age. Because it's participant age. Because there's also like the offender age, which is a, a fake made up offender. P dot age. Okay, I fi fixed that. So p dot age, that's the variable that I want descriptive statistics for. Now if I just do this, it gives me some statistics. Uh, we don't need plots quite yet, but I do need some statistics. Uh, it says we need the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, that's good. And what else do we need? Oh, we need skewness. Okay, so here we go. Here's participant age. 631 participants. Missing six, mean thirty three point three eight, standard deviation, etc. Skewness. Um, we don't need the standard error of the skewness. I uh, guess we can't stop it. So skewness. If it's outside like negative two, like if it's less than negative two, it's greater than positive two. You might want to get concerned about using it in a t test because that means it's a crazy skewed variable. But if it's inside those, you're fine. And even if it's outside those things, if you have a big n, which this seems to, then you're probably just fine. But it's important to, th to start thinking about how skewed your data are, how, about how you know skewed in one direction, about how stretched out left or right they are. So we've got that, but we need it per group. So we use this split thing here. So I find my grouping variable, which is p dot age. Oh no, that's p dot age. It was um, APA versus ATSA, that one. And I put it in the split value. There, now I have, look, Look how beautiful that is. Now, I am not going to leave this in my homework like this, but I can work on this. Let's get back to the document here. I can do something like this. I mean, a table is a perfectly reasonable thing to do. Oh, look at that beautiful table. It's just that this is an ugly table. I should, at the very least, I mean, participant age and you don't use lowercase letters for abbreviations I mean in data sets yes but not in real life not professional organizations and look valid missing okay we can leave that there I guess people know what it means that's a nicer table here that's much more civilized um, explain your groups and make sure you have them the data set up correctly yes we do um, I'm using shift enter by the way. That's how you do enter on this without it, you know, making a new D or E or F or whatever. Um, APA participants and ATSA participants form the two groups in the in the data. Well, that sounds fine. Okay, your hypotheses in words and also mathematical symbols. I'm going to copy paste that H-O-H-A business because it's kind of a pain to do the subscripts. And I'm going to need like H-O colon and H-A colon colon. Oh, that's an enye. I'll stop it with the enye. Uh, you need, if you're going to do this, you need to know how to do subscripts and, and then go back to normal scripts. So the null hypothesis is going to be that the APA uh, and ATSA uh, are the same, but it's not like the, the organizations aren't the same, it's the means. So actually, uh, in this case, I need to, well, 
Microsoft Word has different stuff, but it's 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 insert symbol in Microsoft Word. Here I'm using my cut rate Microsoft Word, which is LibreOffice, and it's insert uh, special character. So basic Greek. I'm gonna look at a mu here, a lowercase mu. There's a mu. You guys can probably see it much faster. Oh, but I've used it many times. But I want it from the same font. Mu of APA, and I'm going to make that subscript is equal to hypotheses is equal to the mu over here. Um, that's how you do it. Hypotheses are always about populations. Now, the alternative hypothesis is always exactly the same for a for a t-test. It's always exactly the same as the alternative hypothesis with just a difference in the symbol. So that symbol needs to be a not equal to. Why not equal? Because look up here. This is a two-tailed test I've, I've described. Is there a difference? I didn't say um, are a, APA participants older or are ATSA participants older or something like that. I said, is there a difference? We don't know which way it's going to go, so we should do a two-tailed test. I'm going to do insert another special symbol, and I should be able to find <clears throat> a not equals to symbol. If you can't find a not equals, you can do like greater than or less than greater than together, which gets used sometimes. You can draw it, whatever. Okay, so see how these are basically the same? Now, I said also in words, so, oh, and then this, I just messed it up. Don't worry, that's not actually an important issue with grades, etc. cetera. Um, I'm just gonna copy them paste this. I'm using shift enter again. But I don't want all that junk. The population mean of APA participants ages. Oh god, I did that again. I guess is the same as I could say equal to the population mean of at uh, participants ages. Like that's not the most beautiful way of saying that, but that works. Then I could say here, and basically it's the same thing. Now I could be clever and concise, but I do not have to be. Repeating yourself is perfectly okay in research because it leads to clarity. Um, I can say not. That's it. I'm good. It's not the same. There we go. I've got my hypotheses. Alpha level. Now I'm going to do 0 0.05. I would choose 0 0.01 if the consequences of being wrong were significantly greater. I don't think this is a really big critical issue in the world. Um, there is no reason to believe that being wrong about this issue will cause serious harm or problems. So alpha of, of 0.05 is acceptable because the larger your alpha, the more likely you are to actually make those kinds of errors, to have like a false positive well, not like exactly a false positive provide a diagram okay now I'm going to switch over to a diagram I'm going to use the t-test diagram the t-diagram that came with this there we go sorry got that right now so this is my diagram I'm gonna mess with it and it's okay to use like basically Microsoft paint now this is the GIMP and it's the graphics image manipulation program is like free Photoshop. It takes a while to get used to it, but I'm used to it. If you're used to Microsoft Paint, great. If you want to draw this on a piece of paper and take a picture of it and include that photograph with your with your uh, homework, it would be nice if you cropped it nicely and inserted the photograph in your homework so I don't have to hunt for it. But if you can't figure out how to do that, that's fine. Just draw it, take a piece of paper, take a picture, print this out, color it in with colored pencils, whatever. I'm I know how to do this using my computer, so I'm going to do this using my computer. So let's get over here. Now, what 
am I supposed to put in? I'm supposed to put um, the diagram. I'm supposed to put mu zero t critical, which means I have to look up t critical, and I'm supposed to put in alpha. So I'm gonna. Oh, what is going on here? Why? Oh, wrong tool. Mu zero equals zero. There's a lot of ways to put that, but I mean, that's the mean, right? Now, for a paired samples or an independent samples t-test, almost 100% of the time, the expected mean according to the null hypothesis is zero because these are hypotheses about differences between means. The null hypothesis says there is no difference. It says mu zero or mu of alpha mu of at says equal to mu of APA. So I could have written that a little more um, precisely in my hypothesis statement. Let's go back and look at that here. Um, my hypothesis statement. Uh, why can't I cycle backwards? So why don't I go back up here and change the hypothesis statement? I can make it much more mathematically pleasing. I'm going to copy that. Copy. This is how mathematicians would normally do this. I need to make that not subscript. Mu APA minus mu ATSA equals zero. In other words, that's the null hypothesis expected mean. And then this needs to be exactly the same. Well, non subscript is not equal to zero. There, that's a slightly more mathematically satisfying way of writing this. And we can see that that is what we see. This minus this equals zero. Well, this is, uh, oops, you can't see what I'm seeing. I have to remember to switch. So this is the sampling distribution of differences between means. APA mean minus ATSA mean, APA mean minus ATSA mean. And, I, and the null hypothesis, this whole thing is always, everything is according to the null hypothesis. And so the mean according to the null hypothesis is zero. The mean difference, in other words, the null hypothesis says there's no difference between the means, so the mean of those different scores is equal to zero. Wait, did I put that in the right place? I'm going to switch to your textbook here. Um, Where's your open into a textbook? Okay, too many windows. Uh, down here we've got the distribution tables. We've got the t-table here. The t-table is going to tell us, that's a normal probability table, we want t. Uh, the degrees of freedom of one group, plus the so the n of one group plus the n of the other group, minus 2. So there's a minus 1 for each group. So 100 minus 1 and 180 minus 1, so that would be you know, 99 plus 179. Well, as you'll see in the t-table, that's just going to be the maximum value, which will be very similar to what z would have been. Okay, so here we go. We want a two-tailed test, and we want alpha equals 0.05, and we want, so it's going to be two tails, and alpha equals 0.05. That's the same as one tail alpha of 0.025, which we wouldn't do because 025 is a weird number. So... This third column here, not including this one tail, two tails thing, the, because that's degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom, keep going, go to get up to 30, 30. I mean, we're uh, 99 plus 179. So that's like 280, it's 278. So we'd probably go down to 200, which is extremely close. 1.65, that should seem sort of familiar, plus or minus 1.65. So T critical is 1.65. So let's get back to our T distribution. So we have T critical of plus and minus negative 1.6 or 1.65. So here we have down on the T negative 1.65. That's T critical. And over here, about the same place, I put t critical equals 1.65 so here it's okay I can't tell it's a negative 
and this is a positive which I don't have to label. So there we go. I've got the stuff labeled that I needed to label. Let's look back at the document here. Uh, is that everything? I'm going pretty slow with this. And Oh, alpha. Can't forget. Alpha is defined by T critical. So I've got alpha on here. Wait, you didn't see me do that. There we go. That's what I did. I put alpha here in those two places. Half of alpha is on the left, half of alpha is on the right, because this is a two-tailed test. So you have two tails, and you divide alpha in half. OK, now let's look back at the document and see where we're at at this point. Um, calculate T observed using JASP. That's the calculation. All right, well, let's do that. Let's go back to JASP. As long as we set everything up, this is pretty easy. Here, we ignore this, go to t-tests. How easy is this? Under classical, don't ever use the Bayesian, or Bayesian, depending on how people want to say it. I guess Bayesian, named after the Reverend Thomas Bayes. So independent samples t-test, under classical. That's what we want. We're doing an independent samples t-test, as it said in the heading to the homework. We need a numerical variable. What is the test of? It's a participant age. The dependent variable, the response variable, that's the queen of the ball. The grouping variable, is just giving us some nuance here and that was uh, APA versus ATSA. There we go. Now it's set up. Oh, well that's lovely. We, uh, we have our results right there. T observed is this T right here. T 1.623. Don't report it to three decimal places. Report it to two. There's no reason for three decimal places. 278 degrees of freedom, and P is 0.11. Now, how do you know if you reject the null hypothesis? You look at P. What was your alpha? 0.05. Is P less than alpha? It is not. Therefore, do you reject the null hypothesis? You do not. You want P less than 0.05 to reject that null hypothesis. 0.11 is significantly bigger. It's twice as big, or slightly more as 0.05 so we do not reject the null hypothesis with this so we're going to paste that but also let's look back i'm just looking back at the assignment it, we're going to need a confidence interval for this so i'm just going to take care of that right now i'm going to over here i'm just going to tell it to give me a confidence interval we're also going to need a plot so confidence interval location parameter i know that's weird but it's a Point estimate is another way of saying that. The mean is the point estimate. So additional statistics. It's not the mean of the groups. It's the difference. See here, mean difference between groups, 1.978 there. And we want a confidence interval for it. So let's just leave it at 95% confidence interval. All right, this is beautiful. I can copy and paste this thing. And I can put that in my document. Let's switch back to the document. And I'm going to put that there. Now, I'll let you worry. OK, I'm going to try and get the numbering staying the same. I'm probably going to do a control enter here so this goes on to the next page. It doesn't have a dangling thingamajiggy. So I'm going to clean this up. I don't need a heading that says independent samples t-test. We know that's what it was. The software wanted to tell us that, but we don't need that. Now p.age, I should probably change that to be participant age. I should round this off to 1.62. Over here, p.11, um, mean difference, 1.98. I mean, there's no reason 1.22, point, negative 0.42, 0.43. 8. You'll notice that 0 is included there. This is less than 0. This is greater than 0. So, yeah, that's another way to say we would have re would not have rejected the null hypothesis. This is the difference between means. The standard error of the difference, I should, you know, change those to make them a little more tidy. Note student's t-test. We don't have to note that. Of course it was student's t-test. We've got that. And then on the diagram, we add t observed. How do I know where T observed is? So let me go back to my diagram. 
Now we need t observed. Well, how do I know where t observed is? Well, you know it is between the mean and t critical because p was greater than 0.05. When that happens, t observed is in this middle part. You did not reject the null hypothesis. It doesn't matter where it is. You just have to put a summer. I'm going to make it a different color here. I'll make it like this color maybe a little darker. All right. So I'm going to put Um, I'm, I'm going to put the label up here. I'm running out of space to put things, so it's not the best possible thing. But I'm going to put T observed and T observed. Why did I have two? Because this is all that I really found. I put, I found one point, wait, what was it in JASP? Uh, 1.62. It was pretty close to 1.65. I probably should put this really close, but that doesn't matter. The point is to show that it's here. And then this one, I put negative 1.62. Why? Because it's a two-tailed test. Everything has to be mirrored. If I found a T observed here, I would have accepted a T observed over here. So if you forget this part, don't worry about it. So, so you put this over here. Um, now, I need to label P. So P is, is going to be in two places. It's going to be this green shading. I'm going to put a different... It, overlaps alpha and you'll be able to see that p is much bigger than alpha so p goes out to infinity also and p is also here see how not amazingly beautiful this this is it doesn't need to be amazingly beautiful for this homework it just needs to show me that you understand what's going on there okay that's a crazy mess ish but that's definitely neat enough that i can read it when you turn that in with your homework it shows me that P, the green parts, are much bigger than the red parts. Well, you probably are not even seeing that right, that, those colors, right? Um, it's showing you that, those, that, that the P colors are bigger than the, than the alpha colors. So P is greater than alpha, which shows me I did not reject the null hypothesis. So let's go back to our document. And, okay, so I added the diagram. I filled in the area to say, state my decision. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. Why? Because P was greater than alpha. Another way to say that is the difference between means was not big enough. It was too close to the null hypothesis expected mean of the difference between means. Watch the videos, absorb them. Hopefully you'll understand this. Report a confidence interval. Okay, we got it. I, I, I wrote it right up here. Negative 0.42 to 0.438. It's a confidence interval for the difference between means. So I'm going to put, um, uh, let's see, sample mean difference was 1.62 years. 95% confidence interval is negative 0.42 comma 4.38 and you don't have to put the units again because it's confidence interval for that so we know that's what it's for then I can say we are 95% confident that the true difference that true means in the population the population means between um, APA and ATSA ages. Wait, which way did that go? Let me look at my results. Um, let me look back up at these descriptive statistics. Who was older, APA or ATSA? I should figure that out. Oh, I see. So APA was slightly older than ATSA, 52 years versus 50 years. Wow, not much difference. Anyway, I was just looking at the JASP output for a second there. So APA slightly older than ATSA. Uh, anyway, but it doesn't really matter because we found no difference. If we found a difference, we should definitely say which way it went, but we didn't find one. Um, is between negative 0.42 years. Now, it might help to explain this, i.e. Um, ATSA uh, participants are older and 4.38 years, i.e. APA participants. I'm putting that in because it's hard to keep track of 
The negative means one group was higher, the positive means the other group, because it's a difference between groups. Now I'm going to put p is greater than 0.05. And if you want to be really fancy, you put your p in italics, because that's how we do it. But don't worry. Oh, no, no, I don't put that there. What am I, what am I saying? Um, I should put this here up here with the hypothesis p uh, on italic greater than 0.05. There we go. A conceptual statement of the results. Oh, maybe I should put that down here. I'll put it down here too. Definitely goes with the conceptual statement. We did not find evidence of an average age difference. Now, I'm not going to say in the population I could. But I said it so many times, and people reading this know that this was about population values between APA and ATSA participants. P is greater than 0.05. So people know what alpha level. I'll provide the graph. I'll, I'll copy and paste um, the relevant stuff from JASP. I'm not going to, if I did any accidental mistaken analyses, I'm not going to copy and paste those. This is where you just dump stuff. Now, the graph is pretty. And I'm going to switch back and show you how to do that in a second. That's the last thing that, we're, that we really need to do for this analysis, or that I'm going to show you for this analysis. You, you can make things look pretty. But let me switch back to JASP. Um, no, nah, not, not descriptive statistics. Let me collapse this. Let me go back to our independent samples t-test. Almost done here. See how it says descriptive plots? I want that. And I want the confidence interval. If I scroll down, I'll see. There we go. That's the mean of the age of the APA group. That's the mean of the age of the ATSA group. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to switch back to my document. And I am going to paste it. There, I'm going to make it slightly not insanely huge because it's taking up half the page and it's not a very complicated or big graph. Also, I'm going to do fancy things like, oh, come on, alignment, wrap, well, no wrapping. Okay, there's always something in your program. Microsoft Word does this a little bit differently. There we go. There's my graph. Oh, I was supposed to put it down here. Uh, can I put it, if I do this just right, does it go like between, all right, fine. It can go down here. I can still see it. And I'll copy and paste down here the relevant output from JASP, so the raw output before I made it all pretty, and I'm done. Now, you could probably do this in the time I just spent doing this, or even less. And I'll be back to do the other ones also.